this week a little bit of women in music news came through in that we heard the sad news that Mary Wilson, a founding member of the 60s group The Supremes, has died at the age of 76. Now, The Supremes were hugely successful. They scored five consecutive number one singles in the US and they sold 100 million records worldwide. And uh, I'm very lucky and happy to say that joining me on the line to remember Mary Wilson is music journalist, radio and TV presenter and author Paul Gambaccini. Hello, Paul. How are you? Well, uh, hello, Lydia. I am fine. I'm glad. And I'm happy, I'm happy to be talking about Mary Wilson because she really is one of the most important musical personalities of the second half of the 20th century. Now, people may think, oh, you always exaggerate people's importance when they're died. But, uh, in fact, the Supremes were uh, the group that had more number ones ever in America, uh, outside of the Beatles, the, the American group that had the most number ones, 12. And, as you say, they had five number ones within a 12-month period. It was so exhilarating. But also, the social importance of this group cannot be underestimated. Both Oprah Winfrey and Whoopi Goldberg have said they were inspired to a career in show business when they saw the Supremes on the Ed Sullivan Show in their first appearance singing Come See About Me. They realized that uh, a young black girl with no privileges could make it to be on TV. And this was one of the amazing achievements of the Supremes. Uh, there had been one major female group in the 30s and 40s before them, the Andrews Sisters. They were a white group. There would be another one towards the end of the century, Destiny's Child. But the Supremes really ruled the roost uh, from 1964 through to 1970. Mary Wilson is the only member of the Supremes who was there from day one, to the last day. She founded it with her friend Florence Ballard. They were in their mid-teens. Uh, they got a couple more people to join, one of whom was their friend Diane Earl, who became known as Diana Ross. And uh, there was someone called Barbara Martin who quit to be a mother, uh, so she missed out on all the fun, although maybe she had fun being a mother. And uh, then the, the Supremes had eight singles without a hit, they were known around Motown as the no-hit Supremes, but then they were teamed with the writing and production team of Holland Dozier Holland, and they had this fantastic run. They had a mild hit at first, when the love light starts shining through his eyes, a medium hit called Run Baby Run, and then they got a song that the Marvelettes had turned down, which was Where Did Our Love Go? And that was a huge number one in America, got to number three in Britain. The next one was Baby Love, which was number one in both countries, and so forth. And even when Diana Ross left the group to launch her own successful solo career, Mary stayed with the Supremes as they had more hits like Nathan Jones, Stoned Love, Up the Ladder to the Roof. So she was there until the very end in the late 70s, and... What an incredible thing to say that you were the only Supreme who was there for the whole run. Yeah, and to be honest, when I see like musicians that are around in the 60s, 70s, maybe they do it for a little while and then they, they come out of the music industry. Was Mary like that? Did she do actually music all the way through her life? or She did indeed. And uh, she uh, toured here. She, uh, of course, retained a fan base. And uh, th there were a lot of people who, who wanted to see her, who wanted to see the Supremes. They longed for a reunion of the Diana Ross Supremes, but that was never to be. But uh, Mary was a very uh, popular uh, woman, and uh, she managed to have a comfortable career. She was once asked, well, she was many times asked, are you jealous of Diana? And she said, oh, of course not, because... She's my friend, and uh, we shared so much together. And, and then she'd be asked, is she really your friend? <laughs> and she would say, well, in my heart she is, because we shared a dozen years of life. Mm -hmm. Things are different now, different circumstances, but you never forget your childhood friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I totally see where you're coming from with that. I mean, I think everyone can relate to 
to to that and always see always being with their childhood friend even if they're not with them you think of them don't you it's um exactly. it's a very spo- special bond um do you have any memories of being around mary wilson because i know you've I don't think there's one single music legend I can think of that you haven't interviewed. So is Mary Wilson on that list? Well, I did have a very pleasant evening with her because when she was touring the Supremes costumes, which may sound like a strange thing to do, but you have to remember that the Supremes were a high fashion act, particularly since they appeared on the Ed Sullivan show so many times. Ed Sullivan, the American TV host, loved them. And they always had interesting fashions. So all Americans saw the same dresses at the same time. And Mary asked each Supreme as she left the group, can you give me the clothes? (laughs) So she became the virtual museum owner of the Supreme's fashions. So came the time when she actually toured the costumes. And uh, this tour was coming to Bath the city of Bath, and so I was asked to go down there. I had dinner with her, and we talked over uh, both the Supremes and the costumes, and she walked me through the exhibit, and then I interviewed her on stage to launch the exhibit. So I I got to know a lot of her perspective on this, and the amazing thing is, of course, the Supremes fashions, which may have been something cobbled together for another episode of Ed Sullivan, have turned out to be period pieces, and in some cases, they're considered high fashion yeah uh, and it's just the i'm just picturing the supremes now and i can just picture those gowns and that incredible 60s fashion um i wish i was around in that time to be honest because i think the fashion was better then than it is now well it was wonderful in the 60s and when the 70s came i found myself thinking why are we doing this because (laughs) fashion was going downhill in the 70s there was a scene in hair the musical where there is a female trio of young black women singing around a microphone, and uh, you just assume automatically they're wearing uh, their own dresses. But when they stop singing and they uh, spread out, it turns out they're all inside the same dress. And that was a brilliant stroke. The audience always loved that scene because the Supremes on TV looked like three variations of the same person. It was fantastic. (laughs) <laughs> That's great. Um, so what legacy do you think Mary's going to leave? Well, uh, first and foremost, the musical legacy, because hardly anyone has touched 12 number ones in America. Uh, but also this incredible social importance that they were uh, an inspirational trio for young black girls across the United States and the world. And uh, also, uh, she was the keeper of the flame of the Supremes long after Diana Ross had lost interest in them. And uh, so she is really the Supreme Supreme. She is. I think that's the... I think that's what kind of sums it all up. She, even though maybe Diana Ross was more famous slash more kind of... She was seen as the front runner. I think Mary really held the group together and got them through, didn't she? Oh, exactly. It was heartbreaking for the fans when Florence left. She was having difficulties. Florence had originally sung some leads before they were famous. And so she felt, uh, quite accurately, that Barry Gordy, the head of Motown, was downplaying her in favor of uh, Diana Ross, with whom he had a romance. And uh, she uh, turned to uh, substance abuse and suffered from depression and, as you know, left the group. This is the story which is told, at least in parallel, in Dreamgirls. Hmm. You are probably familiar with the musical Dreamgirls, which Mm -hmm. is this uh, parallel story to a group like the Supremes. And so, uh, indeed, Mary Wilson wrote a book called Dreamgirl, because she was one of them. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, so Florence left, Cindy Birdsong came in, and that was the beginning of the changes in personnel. But Mary was always there. She was. And uh, she she just stayed there. Yeah, well, our thoughts are with everyone who knew her, um, and it was a it was a real shock when that news came in this this week. Um, but we do hope that all her family are ha- are having the the privacy that they deserve, and uh, 
and that we all just all our thoughts are with the friends and family of her right now um paul gambaccini thank you so much for your time tonight um it's been awesome to chat to you um Lydia, you're welcome <laughs> thank you this has been a crazy bit of radio um okay. but we are going to play a song now by the supremes which was a uk number one for them this is a baby love <laughs> 